Welcome to the Supernatural Track here at Continual. I'm your host, Kelsey Martin, and tonight we're going to talk about some of the projects that Jared and Jensen have undertaken since uh, Supernatural's finale, or as we like to say, between the end of Supernatural and the beginning of, you know, what comes next, which we hope is more Sam and Dean Supernatural. But in that hiatus, they've been busy. So we're going to touch on, on their big projects. But before we dive into that, Let's let our wonderful panelists introduce themselves, starting with Ann. Hi, I'm Ann Wicker. I'm a former journalist and now a writer and editor. And I came late to the Supernatural fandom, but dived right in. And I just am pleased to be talking about some of these projects. Very good. Sue. Hi, Which Ms. one? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you asked him. I, I'm Sue Ashworth. I'm also known as Candy Graham. Um, I don't do very much of anything. I'm retired, so mostly I write. Very good. Sue Phillips. I'm Sue Phillips. I'm the director of the science fiction literature track at Dragon Con. And other than that, I don't do a whole lot except read and, and watch TV. Uh, Supernatural is one of the things I love. Okay. Ren. Okay, uh, my name is Ren Sims. I am a longtime con runner of 30 some years. Um, I am the wife of the guy who wrote the first and third and fourth Supernatural Italian novels. Uh, I'm a pretty big fan of Supernatural and all things Jensen and Jared, but I share a birthday with uh, Sam Winchester today, and which is when we're filming this. And uh, that's about it. I am an editor at times. I've done many things in my life. I am currently we're going to be releasing our first book, hopefully this year, under Whisperwood, which we have set all up and going forward. And we're just now waiting for everything back from um, edits back from our people will be out this week. It's going to be called The Four Blank of the Apocalypse, uh, both funny and uh, horrific takes on four whatever of the apocalypse. <laughs> yes. Tammy. Tammy. Oh, hi, I'm Tammy. I'm retired too. I don't do much of anything. I write sometimes. Very good. Lynn. Hi, I'm Dr. Lynn Zabernis. I'm a clinical psychologist and a professor at Westchester University, and my main research area is fandom. I am unfortunately not retired, so way too busy. <laughs> um, but I love researching and writing books, especially on the shows that I love, like Supernatural. My most recent two were written with the actors and the fans of Supernatural. So that's Family Don't End With Blood and Over My Shoulder. There'll be peace when you are done. Okay. And I'm Gail C. Martin and Morgan Bryce. As Gail, I write epic and urban fantasy. As Morgan, I write urban fantasy, male, male, paranormal romance. But all my modern worlds are ones Sam and Dean could walk into and feel right at home. I'm a huge Supernatural fan. And so, of course, I followed our boys to their new project. And I'm very excited to talk about, um, you know, how that's gone. So let's start with Walker. And we've got a lot to cover today, but um, let's make sure everybody gets a chance to say what they want to say about Walker. What do you love? Uh, and how, how is it for you seeing Jared being Cordell? And I like Walker. Um, it's, I like the feel of the show in many ways, although I do um, wonder, I think in the very beginning, it was trying to find its footing between being a cop show and a family drama. And I think this this third season, it's really come more into its own with, with that aspect of it. Um, I, was a, I w went through a phase where I was a big fan of the original Chuck Norris Walker. And of course, this Walker is totally different. <laughs> And, and I think that he does, I think that Jared does a good job as Cordell embodying um, a guy who has, who is torn between his family and his very involved, stressful job. Okay. Sue Ashworth. <laughs> um, We're going to have to remember to get that last name in there. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm 
probably going to be the unpopular opinion. I'm not particularly keen on Walker as a show. Um, I think it spends way too much time focusing on the teenage dramas. Um, well, not... it is the CW that kind of goes. <laughs> yeah, the teen soap, but it has to me become a teen soap. Uh, I was fairly hopeful at the beginning of this last season with the Black Ops, etc. But they lost their way with that to me completely. And, and um, I ended up very frustrated when all of a sudden we're onto something totally different. And it's, you know, it didn't last a season. It wasn't really resolved and uh, it, it was thrown away. So sorry, I, mean, I, love, I love Jared, but I don't care for Walker, not particularly. Okay, Sue Phillips. Uh, I have to admit, I only watched part of the first season of Walker. Uh, like the other Sue, it didn't really grab me. <laughs> okay. um, I love Jared. I think he did a good job. I just, it just wasn't my cup of tea. Okay. Carol, uh, I totally please introduce yourself. Um, introduce oh. yourself, and we're asking, you know, okay. what are your thoughts about Walker and and how's Jared as Cordell? Uh, I'm Carol Stokes, a longtime Supernatural Buffy all over fan, big fan of Jared and Jensen, and um, uh, frequent panelist on Continual. Uh, I really supported. Jared going into this, uh, I still support him. Let me not make any, you know, miss, miss speaking there. Um, and I enjoy a good cop show that has a, you know, uh, family slash interpersonal side. I kind of like seeing both of those elements in a show a la NCIS or something. And um, so I was really looking forward to it. That being said, I watched the first two seasons of Walker and it just, it felt to me too choppy, trying to do too much at once. Yeah. Uh, there were characters that I really liked. I liked Tr uh, Trey a, a ton. I liked the captain. Um, yeah. I like Liam. I, I love seeing a mature couple like uh, Maulene and Bonham where they're not just there to dispense wisdom. They're not just there to be, you know, the grandparents. They have a vital life of their own and they have their own story in addition to with everybody else. And so I really enjoy seeing characters like that being so well-rounded. But I feel like the actual plot and storyline itself is, is choppy. Uh, I, I don't appreciate... I, I understand getting some teenagers in there, but these teenagers do nothing for me. In fact, I want to smack them a lot of the time. <laughs> I'm just like, come on, guys. <laughs> I know you had a lot of trauma, but, you know, uh, and I'm still waiting for the moment that someone will acknowledge the fact that Stella gaslit, you know, her father into thinking he was having this terrible drinking, you know, driving accident that pre precipitated him then leaving for the undercover case. It, like. That's a to me. That's a huge, uh, yeah. you know, elephant in the room. <laughs> okay. So I really gave it a shot. I really wanted to like it, uh, but I, for me personally, as my viewing pleasure, I couldn't. I couldn't stay with it. Okay, Tammy. I really like Walker, so I guess I'm like <laughs> in the in the minority here. But I really like Walker. I like the family part better than I like the cop part. So I actually, the Black Ops thing didn't do anything for me. I was glad it was over. <laughs> I really like the family drama. I like the relationships. I like uh, the how interpersonal it is. I like that it's multi-generational, that it gives people of all ethnicities and all backgrounds a chance to shine. So I'm really hoping it gets renewed because we still don't know yet. And I'm really enjoying watching it. Okay. Ren, I think you said you haven't watched Walker, but I just wanted to touch base with you. You're muted. I have watched um, about three quarters of the first season. Um, and I have, I'm much more with Carol and with, uh, with the first Sue in that I, I find, uh, I am, 
we we watch a lot of police procedurals here. We watch a lot of cop shows. It's something that Keith and I both love to watch and have watched for years. And we've been delving into ones from um, Australia, New Zealand, and England, and 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 Denmark lately. Um, but uh, and there's a new one that's Welsh. It's interesting. But anyway, um, it's I find that they're not the balance between the two is not that good in my opinion. It it tries to be both a good cop show and a good family show. But I only got through the first, uh, before this, the first uh, three quarters so of the first season. So I don't have much to say about it. Um, the other shows that we're going to be discussing today, I'm much more into. Okay. That's, I'll pass the time to other people who need to talk. <laughs> okay, Lynn. I have an interesting relationship with Walker. Um, it I never watched the original show. And it, if Jer if it wasn't Jared's show, I never would have watched it. It's not like if I read the description of it, I would never say, oh, that's that's definitely a show that I'm going to watch. I watched it because it was Jared's show to support Jared. And in the beginning, I had a I had kind of a rough evolution with it, but I have actually come to really enjoy it. I, I think I had to, it's not like, it's not like Supernatural, you know, I'm not in love with it and in love with its characters like I was with Supernatural, certainly, but I found a way to watch it that really worked for me. And mostly that's because I think they've done a good job with, with some issues that shows often don't do a good job with. I have really liked their ongoing exploration of grief and loss and how that trauma impacts people's lives and doesn't go away and just keeps evolving and impacting people. Every time somebody takes a developmental leap on the show, the trauma and the loss that they're carrying with them as baggage comes back and impacts them in a new way. So I think my psychologist brain likes watching it through that kind of a lens. Um, I also, as everybody has said, I think as someone who is not a teenager, I do really love Bonham and Abilene and the way they do that relationship and the way that they've dealt with things like aging and chronic illness and diagnosis and things. So I've kind of found the lens that I like to watch it through and I've, I've come to be quite fond of it. I also have good friends who work on the show. So I am just sitting around with my fingers and toes crossed, really hoping that it's gonna get renewed. Yeah, I, I get to give my thoughts at length on Walker because I'm a, I review for the Winchester Family Business blog, so I I, I get to say things at, at longer uh, duration there and get in get into the details. Um, like Lynn, I I wouldn't have picked Walker if it hadn't been one of it if it hadn't been Jared's project because it's not the kind of show I would normally watch. Um, I did it to support him. I agree with Lynn also that I love seeing most most cop shows, detective shows, no matter what horrible things they see, the next episode, they're just back to themselves, mm -hmm. unless they have a drinking problem, because that usually goes with cops and detectives. But they never really dive into how the job gets under somebody's skin and into their head and what kind of scars it leaves on them other than bullet wounds. And I think that Walker has done a good job about dealing with the mental health issues. Um, I also love seeing Mitch Pledgey as a not psychotic grandfather. Um, it's really wonderful to see him <laughs> yes. as instead of Samuel Campbell. Um, and I think the cast does a great job. Um, probably my second favorite to, to Jared is, is Liam um, because he's just such a lovable little cinnamon roll. Um, you know, he's just so beautiful. Um, and I am happiest when the episodes don't have much of the teenagers in them because been that, done that, got the t-shirt, not interested, but I understand it's a CW and so you've got to march them across the screen every now and then because uh, it's the brand. So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that they get renewed for the cast's sake. And I think that there has been a lot of growth with the show over the three years. So I think season three was a lot more solid than the previous season. So given that, I'd love to see what they can come up with in a season four, which of course the show spawned a prequel before it had even really had its whole run. So now let's talk about uh, Winchester Independence or as it's known to its fans, Wendy. Anne? Well, I'm, um, I made some notes here because I've watched about half of the season of Wendy 
I like, um, I think they've done a really good job with the sets. Um, and I, I love seeing Mark Shepard <laughs> in anything. And as the saloon owner, you know, he's great. And, and the idea that, that there are these strong women in the West, in the West, um, because I think maybe, I mean, in a way, I mean, I'm watching it and I'm thinking this behavior is too modern. Um, but in other ways, I know that women who took out, took off to be out West had to be strong to survive. And so, so that's an interesting aspect. And, and they bring in the aspect of the, of the Chinese guy who does the laundry and has the little restaurant. And I think he's a great character. And of course, but my favorite character is of course, Hoyt. And it, and seeing him as his ancestor, I suppose, is is a really fun thing, and um, and having the overall mystery of of how she is going to finally, you know, get Tom Davidson. Um, Abby's going to finally get him. I, I'm interested to see how it plays out. I grew up watching Westerns. My dad loved Gunsmoke and Bonanza and Cheyenne Bodie. And I'm I'm way older than all y'all. So, you know, y'all yeah. probably didn't watch <laughs> those. <laughs> <laughs> but, but my dad loved Westerns. And so we watched a lot of Westerns when I was yeah. growing up. I did as and, well. For, I'll explain why later. What now? <laughs> I did as well. I'll explain why. Okay. So, so I find it interesting just as a Western, uh, you know, a look at a modern Western. Um, and I think they do a real, I think they've done a good job with it. I really do. Um, and the acting is great. Kat McNamara is, is sometimes I think she's a little stiff, but other times I think that that's the way she is surviving or she's helping the character to survive if you will so anyway but overall I like what I've seen so far okay so Ashworth I love Wendy I it's the best of them all so far and I couldn't even pick a favorite character because they're all so well drawn I think if I had to choose it would be Callian the um the apache um but really there's not much to choose between them they've all been so carefully sketched that we know who they are and we even um tom davidson <laughs> we knew he was a villain they tried to pull the wool over our eyes but we knew who he was and uh you know i think the whole thing has been wonderfully done. It's been beautifully shot. The costumes are superlative. And like Anne said, Mark Shepard, I would run miles to see Mark Shepard. So, you know. <laughs> I'll say we all. So, yeah. Phillips. Well, I'm not familiar with Wendy because I, well, I don't really know why, but, but now that I know Mark Shepard is in it, I'm going to have to go watch it. <laughs> um, <laughs> because like like Sue, if there, I will go anywhere to see Mark Shepard. So. Yeah, and he does a wonderful job. Uh, Carol Stokes, I've um I have not finished Wendy. I watched about the first half a dozen episodes, and then I was kind of caught up in doing like Buffy rewatch for another series of panels, and my viewing time is limited, <laughs> so I had to make sure I got through all of that. That being said, I plan to go back and finish, you know, pick up where I left off and keep watching. Uh, I do think it's just a gorgeous production. The production values are just beautiful. The cinematography, the, yeah. you know, the sets and everything, they really took their time with this. And I feel that way with the storylines too, that um, in contrast a little bit to Walker, where they're trying to do all the things I feel like Wendy is much more focused on one, you know, one thing. And we've got other things going on. It's not like the other characters don't have stories as well. 
but there's not quite that frenetic sense of I have to, everything has to have an equal amount of time. Everything kind of has a focus to, you know, this one we're focusing here and now we're going to focus there. And even the side things blend in better. So it's not so much like separate storylines running along. These are all interwoven as we go. So, yeah, I think they really uh, struck a terrific note with with Wendy in terms of the story pacing. They got great a great cast. They really made sure it looked, you know, you're not looking at it going, wow, this is like some cheesy Western, <laughs> you know, you really are, are caught up in it because even visually it's so uh, appealing. So yeah, that's a thumbs up from me. Amy? I love Wendy. It is my favorite show on TV and <laughs> I've got all my fingers crossed it's going to be renewed. I, I know the chances are slim, but it's a really good show really well cast, really well written. They had a vision and they stayed They stayed to it. It is uh, beautifully shot. All the characters are fully re recognized. I love all the characters, even Peeping Tom, Sneaky Tom. <laughs> I love him. Uh, Gus is probably my favorite, but they're all written so well, performed so well. It really deserves a shot at a second season because I think it is the best show on TV right now. Okay, Rand. I have seen all of Wendy. Uh, I really do like it. I do agree with that. It's really well shot, and and the the town looks real. It works like a real town. Um, but I also like they've taken the stereotypes and twisted them. I mean, yes, we have a a a um, Chinese washerman. Um, but he speak. He really does. You find out he speaks perfect English. There's a lot more to him. He's pretending to be something. A lot of people are pretending to be. Every, there's almost everyone here pretending to be someone that they're not. Yep. Every single character. Now they only have 13 episodes to do this in, so it kind of makes sense that it's what Carol said. It's a lot more directed and focused on their one storyline. They, they have 13 episodes, I, I believe. Right? Like Walker has a lot more per season. Um, but I do like that even, yeah, yeah, even the bad guy, he doesn't, there's more to him than that. Yeah. He is a bad guy. He has no choice but to be a bad guy, but he doesn't want to be. But he is always going to be because there's the flaws in his personality as well as, I really do like how Greg got, I always mispronounce his last name, um, her bat, her bat uh, but he is really doing really well with that. Um, it. But everyone is pretending to be something that they aren't throughout all of it. Maybe without, <laughs> with the exception of Mark Shepard. Well, yeah, he's pretending to be hard ass when he's not. <laughs> he's pretending to be a hard ass asshole when he really isn't. He is this often, um, all throughout it. But the storyline, I don't want to get into too much spoilers, but they set it up really well for a second season that is going to be just as interesting as the first. Yeah. And of course, I really love the cameo, the cameo. Yeah. <laughs> the third's cameo. There and then. Oops. That's all I'm going to say is yep. oops. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to avoid too many spoilers here for people of the panel who have not seen it all. Um, I want more of that one. I really do. Because I said all of the characters feel more real than a lot of other TV shows I've seen in the last uh, few years. And that there is a lot more to them. They they have they they've been fully realized with their flaws, with their quirks. They're not flat out stereotypes that they could have been in a western that we've seen forever. And I want to say something with Anne. In 1978, my father got his first VHS, and at that point, they flooded the market with everything they owned, all of the the, the studios. So they flooded VHS tapes that were the old westerns, the old old military but guns of navarone all of those but my father loved the westerns and the serialized westerns i watched text ritter i watched uh, I, I watched all of them um and john wayne all throughout as a, as a child because that was the vhs that was available to buy so yeah i'm okay. younger than i am but i saw them all too i understand <laughs> that i had a father who watched all those same ones especially gunsmoke all 20 seasons gunsmoke. Yeah. Lynn? 
I'm not even a fan of Western, so that doesn't even explain it. But this is going to be unanimous because I also love Walker Independence. It, it is, as everyone has said, it's incredibly beautiful. The cinematography alone is just, it's just yeah. like a piece of art. And it was, it's interesting. I mean, it seems like it was such a passion project for the people who were making it. Even when they were filming the pilot, the director and the cinematographer and the actors were all posting photos from the set and obviously they gelled and they 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 just absolutely love the project and i think that really comes through i am tom davidson is my favorite character i often <laughs> like the dark tortured bad guy <laughs> character and wow greg Havanesian, like he killed that role i love that character i have not seen the very last episode because i sort of couldn't bring myself to watch it because i'm Pretty sure this is not a spoiler because I haven't seen it, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to go well for Tom Davidson. So I just didn't feel like watching that and to be in the middle of a difficult semester. I will eventually see it, but I love that show. I would love to see it get a chance, even, you know, maybe not on the CW, but somewhere where it can really spread its wings and, and really keep expressing that passion they all seem to have for it. Can I say something? Yeah. The answer to Lynn is yes and no. Well, that's a good answer. See, that's why I like it. It's a nuanced show. Yeah. As far as what happens like, with Tom, yes and no. It's like that magic eight ball. At, situation cloudy. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, this is another one where, as a Western, I wouldn't have picked it if it wasn't a Jared project. But like everybody else, I'm blown away with the production quality. The cast is magnificent. The writing has been solid and on point. I wish Walker's writing had hit its stride as quickly as Wendy did because Wendy just got it out of the gate. And as a history major, I absolutely love that we are seeing a much more representational how it actually was West than the whitewashed West that we've seen in the spaghetti Westerns and in the Westerns of the you know, 40s and 50s because that diversity was real in the West. You had black cowboys, you had the Chinese folks who came over to work on the railroad, you had women, you had gay people, you had, uh, you had all this diversity that we, um, you know, certainly the Native Americans and the Spanish, that got left out of a lot of uh, Westerns on TV and movies. And so seeing that represented so well, just makes my little historian heart happy. Um, and, you know, uh, I, I think it's, it's interesting that we, we know that, um, and I'm blanking on her name, the showgirl, who's actually a Pinkerton, who was Pinkerton, um, is bi. We had a really strong hint that Tom's bi uh, when that friend of his showed up. And, um, you know, folks were folks. And I love seeing all of that in the show, but uh, yeah, I really hope that it finds a home, if not on the CW somewhere else, because I think it's a very strong show and I can't wait to see how it actually turns out. So, The Winchesters, the prequel that might not really be a prequel. Uh, <laughs> Anne, what do you think? Well, I, I think that you influenced me the most, Gail, by saying that you were going to go into watching the Winchesters um, just sort of with an open mind that it really didn't have that much to do with the mothership. And I, I tried to do that too. And I really enjoyed it. I have to say, overall, I really enjoyed it. I felt like that there were some, there were some weak spots, but I enjoyed Drake's portrayal of John. He rem and and this somebody else has made this parallel before, but John reminds me of Sam. Mary reminds me of Dean. You know the, that whole thing. Um, I I was a little less taken with Tom Welling as Samuel, but hey, um, they couldn't de-age Mitch. <laughs> Pelegi and he was already committed <laughs> to the other show anyway but but I've enjoyed the getting to know this version of John's mother I think she was great character yeah. but the newest the new character that I really like is Jojo I think he's fabulous having having 
been in high school and college during the exact era of this show. They do a they do a pretty good job with the clothes. Mm. Some of the hair is too modern, but the clothes the clothes are are pretty much on point. And um, and JoJo's van, I knew people that drove those vans. <laughs> <laughs> and um, well, anyway, I won't say what else was going on in those vans, but anyway, don't come talk. Exactly. And so it's uh, it, so I think overall it, it was a, it's a really interesting take on that era and on those two characters that I know some people were questioning why use those two characters as a focus for the show, but I could see doing that because it, that's a love story. And, and, you know, the epic love story of Sam and Dean, the an epic love story of their, their parents. Um, and maybe it's not quite so epic, but I found it fun to watch. Okay. Um, so Ashworth. I really liked it, but <laughs> there are flaws to it. One of the things that they didn't learn from Eric Kripke was not to show the monsters. And as soon as you saw the monsters, they were not scary. They didn't creep you out. The Akrita, once they stopped being weird ants and started to be people who'd been taken over, then they were creepy and scary. But showing the monsters is a mistake. And I really wish they hadn't done that because it would have been better. It would have been probably cheaper too. Uh, I really enjoyed the characters. I loved Ada and I loved mom, John's mom. Um, I thought that uh, there were differences between mainstream um, supernatural and the Winchesters, which I think were pointed up specifically to show that this is not, not the same history line and so on. And when you go back to before the show was even on, Dean Jensen and Robbie both kept saying, trust us. And so many people didn't. I did and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Okay, Sue Phillips. I really enjoyed the Winchesters, um, but to my mind, the more the more interesting characters were the side characters, not side so much as I'm talking about Jojo and Ada yeah. and John's mom. Uh, but I did really like the uh, the dynamic between John and Mary. I kind of saw where they were going, where they would be, how they got to where. I'm sorry. I'm getting tongue-tied, uh, <laughs> how they got to be who, who they ultimately were. Okay, Carol. Well, <laughs> I'm going to be the voice of dissent. <laughs> uh, I don't care for the Winchesters at all. <laughs> now, I will freely admit I have not watched the entire season. I did watch several episodes and um, uh, I just, I, I got from the get-go, I knew it had to be an AU. Um, there was just no way in my mind, it could not be an AU without completely saying, yes, we're retconning everything you ever knew. So I'm like, obviously they're not retconning everything because they kept saying, we're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. So I'm like, okay, it's an AU. Um, now I'm a fanfic writer. I, you know, AUs are my lifeblood. <laughs> <laughs> I deal in AUs. However, I could not buy into this AU. Uh, I I didn't like Mary at all. Uh, I couldn't take the side character seriously. Uh, I couldn't take the fighting and monsters seriously. Uh, and it just it it just never engaged me. Um, I think the only person I really did like was John's mom. Uh, and, and even her, I, it was straining my credulity, you know, that this was John's mother. 
I just liked her as a woman character and she had her own garage and that kind of thing. <laughs> so I'll do respect to the creators. And if you enjoyed watching it, I'm going to be the last person to say, you know, by all means, just keep watching it and enjoying it. I'm all for enjoying, you know, what you want to enjoy to watch, but it did not work for me. Uh, I couldn't go there and I don't plan to go there again. <laughs> okay, Tammy. I did not watch the Winchester, so I'll have to pass on this one. Okay, Ren. Okay, um, like the rest of you, I thought Millie, I thought uh, Bianca uh, was beautiful as Millie. I love the idea of it's his mother who was the car person. We obviously know it wasn't his father. It wasn't John's <laughs> father. John's father was something else. Uh, but Millie, that that's what she did to survive. Fine, I, that's perfectly wonderful. Uh, I love the music. I mean, again, they got they hit the music on point. But I saw all of it, and I understand what Jensen was trying to do. As in the last episode, he kind of tells what he's trying to do, and it's to give his parents an alternate set of his parents a happier story than his own parents had. And I know that's a bit spoilers for this, but that's what happened. Um, and save how Sammy. far? How, how save far? Sammy. What? And save Sammy. Yeah, he can't. Well, Sammy's still alive in, in the alter, and he even states it. Sammy's still. This is spoilers. Sammy's still alive in the normal timeline. Um, he is basically uh, twiddling his thumbs in heaven, and he starts looking. And he's not supposed to do what he did, but he couldn't be Dean without doing that. I mean, I have posited that this is what's going to kick him out of heaven. Is the fact that <laughs> I thought he, that. He keeps on meddling, and Jake is like, "Nope, told you can't meddle. You want to meddle, you got to be down there." Uh, I that's one the perfect way to do a miniseries of a, of Supernatural again with Jensen and Jared would be a matter of a you keep on meddling, fine. Um, it would work, but uh, this was an, this was an alternate reality of something that was left over, and it worked well for that. I agree with Carol, or who was it, Tammy? The one I said about the the monster showing the monsters, Sue, Sue showing the mm -hmm. monsters first. They reminded me of Starship uh, Starship Troopers, and I'm like, we just got uh, spiders again, you know, or you know, <laughs> or Battlestar uh, not Battlestar, um, Babylon Five spiders again. You know, yes. we didn't need that. The, then take them something that takes over the trans uh, that they we don't argue the trans dimensional that takes over people would have been fine. Yeah, and creepier than having these. Yeah, um, I liked. I was at the beginning. I didn't like it that much, but they all grew on me. The characters grew on me. Um, I and they all have a little bit of an arc of growing of their own, and that was that was obviously planned from the beginning that they all were going to get better at who they were as people. And that's as far as I want to give up my time. I'm I'm done with it. Um, I wish they found somebody who looked like Mitch Pileggi to play Samuel. <laughs> Because Tom Welling does not, Tom Welling looks like Superman. He does not look like, <laughs> he does not look like, you know, I keep on seeing him when I see the character he played in Lucifer. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lynn. I had to find my way into this one too. I, that's, that's often what I find myself doing. Of course, I was going to watch it because it's in the supernatural universe and, and it's Jensen's project. So there was no way I wasn't going to watch it. Um, I think I went into it with a lot of trepidation. I loved the supernatural finale. I did not need any kind of fix of the supernatural finale whatsoever. So I knew I didn't want it to be that. I did, like Sue, trust Jensen and Robbie not to destroy canon. I know how much they love and value the original show. So I knew that they would find some way not to destroy it. So that allowed me some measure of sort of damping down my anxiety. Um, but there's a lot of ways to do that. And I was hopeful from the beginning that it was going to be an AU because that's the best way not to mess with the canon of the original show. Still not so sure that was the original intent. The pilot episode doesn't really seem to be going there and it's kind of disjointed from where they ended up. But at any rate, they ended up where I hoped they were going to end up, which is that it is totally an AU and doesn't impact the mothership. So I was happy about that. Um, 
I, I agree with most people that my favorite characters were kind of unexpected. I do think Bianca was was brilliant as Millie. It was a yes. small character, and yet everybody seemed to be like every time she was on screen or Demetria was on screen, the two older characters, I was like, ooh, okay, what's going to happen now? They were really good. Uh, Drake, I thought, was really good. And he's a lovely person. Jojo is fabulous. And that character was very fascinating. So, and I, I liked, you know, obviously Jensen was having as much of a hard time letting go of Supernatural as the rest of us were. And he wanted to bring back familiar faces and friends of his. I loved seeing Gil McKinney back as Henry. You know, there was a nostalgia factor. And again, as long as it didn't mess with Supernatural canon, I'm okay with that. So I, I found my way in to enjoy it. I don't have the same feelings about it that I do as Supernatural. To me, it was just a, it's like a little detour as I'm waiting for actual Supernatural, which has to be Sam and Dean, to come back. So I, I can enjoy it as that little detour. I've gotten to meet the cast a bunch of times and they are absolutely lovely. So now my feelings about it are a little bit colored by how I feel about them and how much they really enjoyed it. So I would like to see it get renewed because I would really like them to be able to keep going. I think it can go along its own timeline on its own. It doesn't need Dean there anymore to do it. We'll see whether or not that happens. But much like Walker, I did eventually find a way to really like it, although there are some things that and, and people have already identified most of the same things that, you know, the visible monsters and things like that, that, that didn't work for me either. But they got better as they went along. Yeah, I, I've kind of settled in at the beginning and said, this is going to be like crossing Supernatural with Scooby-Doo again. <laughs> and I just took it in that vein. I am absolutely thrilled that for as much grief as Sam got over his long hair, Carlos figured out how to weaponize it. <laughs> Whole long hair that was so great <laughs> Sam the bot about that shake off Sam shake off you know uh, <laughs> I just would have loved to have seen that so um and I I really did try very hard to trust Jensen he kept saying it'll all make sense in episode 13 just trust us and I um you know I'm, I believed him and it did and I'm fine with it as it you know, turned out to be, and I still have my fingers crossed that we're going to get super more supernatural with Sam and Dean, and this doesn't do anything to prevent that or change it. So I'm I'm good with that. Now we are coming down to the end of our time, but I want to touch on Big Sky because we get to see Jensen as Sheriff Bo Arlen, and uh, it's only in season three. We don't know if he's coming back in season four. We don't know if the show's coming back in season four. But let's do a quick round and say. Uh, you know, what do you think of Sheriff Bo, Ann? Well, I loved Sheriff Bo. Um, I really, I didn't watch the, I have to admit that I did not watch the first two seasons of Big Sky. I just started watching it because of Jensen. And, but I thought his character was good. Um, and I thought that the whole storyline and Reba McIntyre was just wonderful. And her, who knew her husband was such a good actor too. And um, of course, the the scenery was beautiful. From I guess they were not shooting in Montana though; they were shooting somewhere else. But what it, wherever they were, it was gorgeous. New Mexico, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think you're right, Carol. And. Um, so anyway, I enjoy I enjoyed seeing it as Sheriff Bo. I thought he did a great job with the character. Um, I'd love to see him do more. I had to say I'd rather see him as Soldier Boy, but that's just me. Yeah. And um, well, we did see a lot of him as Soldier Boy. <laughs> yeah. And anyway, it's just um, I enjoyed it. Okay, so Ashworth. Yes. Yeah, I'd like to see more of him as Soldier Boy too. But <laughs> Bo was um, an awesome character because he actually treated women like people, and his whole attitude to his colleagues, even in the very first episode he was in, which was the last part of season two, 
when he was chatting to Cassie and teasing her about women not being able to fix cars and so on, and plain manipulating her into actually fixing his vehicle. He was just adorable. Um, I did watch the first two seasons of Big Sky. First season was gripping, to say the least, was terrifying. Second season was a damp squib. But uh, we did get the character of Dono from it, and Dono has to be my favorite character ever. Okay, too. <laughs> uh, I am not actually familiar with Big Sky, so I'm going to pass on this one. Okay, Carol Stokes. I went ahead and I watched the first two seasons of Big Sky because I thought I want to be in in the groove, you know, to watch Jensen, which actually is the same thing I did with the boys because I hadn't watched all of the boys yet. Um, so yeah, the first season of Big Sky is just amazing. It's amazing. It's scary and it's wonderful. And it's just the performances are fantastic. Second one, sophomore slump. Uh, mm -hmm. Third one, the storyline was strong enough. It was not as strong as season one it wasn't as weak as season two they kind of hit the middle of the road there uh i thought yeah reba was good her husband who plays her husband was amazing i thought he was fantastic um i thought his ex-wife was kind of blah like i'm like how do you not have chemistry with jensen ackles but <laughs> but she didn't but her current husband was really great and conniving and um i've never seen him be a bad guy quite like that before and so he was really interesting and of course i love um dono i do not love dono <laughs> and and i forget her what's her name i forget her name that he's working his partner uh that he's of course you know in love with and everything but <laughs> they're wonderful and i love every scene with them that so that's all of that about jensen himself He's handsome, he's caring, he's the caring father, he's the fun guy, all of this stuff. And really, he was very, very good. He could do that one hand tied behind his back. So I'm like, you know, he's really good, but he does, there's no stretch here. He's, he can just, you know, this just rolls right off him. I much rather see him instead in something that's really pushing him like Soldier Boy, uh, which took him to a whole different world we never even knew was inside him. So loved it. I'll keep watching it. I enjoy it. Uh, but it's not by any means any kind of big, you know, shift in the Jensen uh, oeuvre. <laughs> okay. Danny. I, like everybody else, I think I started watching Big Sky because I heard Jensen was going to be in it. So I watched the first two seasons really quickly. And like everyone else, I really loved the first season and the second season. I was like, maybe I should start skipping some episodes, but I did end up watching <laughs> the whole thing. But uh, I love Bo. Jensen played him really well. Uh, he had chemistry with both Cassie and Jenny, and I enjoyed seeing his scenes with both of them. I'm like, Carol, this was a really easy role for Jensen. I mean, he didn't really do a whole lot of things that he never did before, but I did enjoy seeing him be a father because we have not seen that before. And his relationship with his daughter was, you know, beautiful. It was perfect. It was loving. And so I really enjoyed seeing those scenes. Like everyone else, my favorite character though is always going to be Dono. They can't kill Dono off. <laughs> there would be a riot, but uh, I really enjoyed it. And I would be happy if it gets a season four and I would be happy for him to come back because I would like to see where his character goes. Uh, hopefully not back to his ex-wife because like Carol, I found her really dull. <laughs> but, you know, I'd like to see where else that goes and where that world goes. So I, I would like it to come back for season four and I'd like Justin to come back. Okay, friend. Um, I watched the first season. I didn't have time for the second season. I jumped to the third when I knew we were going to be doing this panel. Um, and I dragged Keith along with me, so he's he's hooked now. Um, I really, really like what Jensen is doing this. It's a very nuanced character, and they're doing a lot enough close-ups of his face, and you can see what he's thinking. 
um, mm -hmm. a lot of times uh, and his worry and his care. And I mean, he was good. He's per, he comes across as a Texas, Texas police officer. He knows he has to be friends with everybody. He knows he has to get them on his team when he comes in. So he, and he does his damnedest not to step on people's toes. I, well, I like Dono as a character. My actual favorite is Denise, uh, D.D. Pfeiffer's character. The one who keeps on like eating him. Uh, I mean, I like her. She's wonderful. And it's the, the Don, Dono is Tonya Walsh's enforcer too. I had, I'd look it up. Um, she's nice and slimy, but yeah, you got, what, what do you got? Dono, you're, I understand. I understand why you, why you like him. He's, he is an enforcer. He's an assassin. He's a master chef. He makes a hell of a pun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And, he likes and he is somewhat on the spectrum too, because it's like that, that's when you then you kill them. Um I was blown out, out of the water by Rex Lynn about Buck. Um, and I know Reba McIntyre can act. We've seen her do that before. But if I was reading up on it, and it was Rex Lynn who talked her into being a bad. She didn't know if she wanted to even do being being a bad a bad guy on the show, an antagonist on the show. He talked her into it, uh, which is wonderful. But I am actually very happy. Just I sat and watched and rewatched Jensen's reactions and how he does things. I do like how they they set out ahead of time, right immediately. The first time there's a problem, he acknowledges the scene the situation and hits the guy. He puts the guy down before Cat before Cassie can react. He's like, and he does it again. It's like, it's like okay. Um, he knows what's going on. He's done the right thing. He's moved quickly, but then he defers to her because she knows everybody more than he does. It was very, very much of a modern, modern type, you know, is it, these are my partners kind of thing. I really, really, really hope they don't turn it into some kind of relationship, though, because no. it just, I really don't want that with either Cassie or Jenny. I don't want it. No. That's with Cassie yeah. that he divers to. Sorry, no, sorry, it's with Jenny that he could divers to. Um, because he's still messed up from his, from his, his breakup. And I'm not certain. I I we talk about no no chemistry between him and Carla. Uh, what I saw was that, but I saw massive control on on his part of what's going on. He is completely controlled, controlling everything about what he's doing and what he's saying when he's talking with her. And it's and even the 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 words the the the, um, the dialogue is like she's used to him shutting down. So there's something that happened. There, there's some talk in some of the write-ups about what happened that led to problems with him. Some, something went wrong. He lost a partner, something went wrong. Um, and that informs how he acts. And that could have been what broke up his marriage. Okay. But he better not get back together with his wife. <laughs> he, he needs to, you know, to be a dad, okay? Um, so I'm hoping for a second, uh, for a fourth season for Big Sky. Um, there was talk about killing him off. He only signed up for one. He may not even be in a fourth season. He only signed up for one season. They could bring him back for a couple. They could bring him back completely. Bring him back for a couple of episodes and tie off his storyline. They could say, "Well, he moved back to Houston." We don't know. We have to hopefully get a fourth season to find out. Okay. But I really enjoyed the, uh, uh, season three. Cool. Lynn? Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I watched the first season of, of Big Sky and really liked it, like everybody else is saying. Started watching season two, stopped watching season two, came <laughs> back to watch the end of season two, and then, of course, watched all of season three. Um, love Dono, like everybody else. I just, just had a conversation with Jensen about how much I love Dono, and Jensen told such a funny story about how, I don't know, if, I, I think this has been in articles also, but Don, Don the guy who plays Dono is, is a writer on the show yeah. and created that character. And then every time they tried to cast the character, it just wasn't as good as the writer himself was saying, no, this is how it has to be. So finally, the producers were like, well, why don't you just play it yourself? And so <laughs> he played it himself. And now everybody absolutely loves that character. Um, I'm also team Carla. I'm always contrary. 
I totally thought he had a fascinating relationship with his ex-wife. I love Cree Cacino, who plays his daughter. I thought it was so refreshing to see an adolescent just actually seem like a real adolescent. Like she seems so very real, not, not like a CW adolescent, but like an actual adolescent, which I really enjoyed. <laughs> Um, and look, Jensen with long hair, he can, he can play whatever he wants as long as he yeah. keeps his hair long, but, but I do, it, I mean, I, that's very true, but it, being more serious, I, you know, he has tremendous range. This was a very different character than the other characters that he's played. And I did think he gave a very emotional performance as a dad, which is something he hasn't gotten a chance to do. So yeah, I, I don't crave him being back on Big Sky, it's not a character that I'm like, oh my God, Bo Arlen, I need more. But I think he did a great job and I'd be happy to watch more if it came back. Yeah, I, I thought Jensen did a terrific job. Um, and of course, one of the things Jensen is so good at is the micro expressions. And so I, I will never turn down close-ups of Jensen for many, many reasons, <laughs> but especially those micro expressions that he can do um, we don't need to see a full body shot. We don't need to see a three quarter shot. He can, he can give you what you need just with the twitch of a lip or an eye. It, they so good with that. So I'm glad that the show shows cinematography played to that. As far as his ex-wife goes, I have seen more chemistry between Jensen and a total stranger in a 30 second photo op. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with an actress. I mean, I, with a whole line of 230 second photo ops, there's more <laughs> chemistry. So I don't, know how they pick the, I don't know how they pick the one female on the planet who doesn't react to Jensen Ackles, but they, they managed. Uh, I, I just don't buy that at all. I get that he's messed up. I just get cold fish from her. So, you know, each his own. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, I would watch more of season four and I'd love to see it come back. And uh, everybody just seemed to be having fun with it. Now, folks, we're running a little late, but I want to get everybody a chance to say where we can find you online. Uh, so let's go around with a lightning round and just uh, tell folks where they can find you. Anne? I'm mostly on Facebook, but I also am on Twitter, just as Ann Wicker, no spaces. I'm on Instagram as Ann.Wicker2. Be careful. I was cloned. And so look for the the profile picture with the bracelets <laughs> gotta have the bracelets okay sue ashworth i'm on twitter candygram i'm on discord and live journal i post fiction on ao3 very good sue phillips i'm at sci-fi lit at dragoncon.org i'm also on facebook as sue phillips okay Carol Stokes. On Facebook, you can find me as Carol M. Stokes, uh, I'm often in Continual and the TFWNC Supernatural group. On Twitter, I'm true underscore firesign10. On Instagram and LJ, I'm firesign10, as well as all my fic on AO3 is under firesign10, mind the tags. Tammy. I'm Tammy underscore Brynn on uh, Twitter. I'm Tammy Brynn H on AO3. I'm Tammy underscore Brynn 2 on Instagram. Very good. Brynn. Well, I'm not that easy to find, but I'm the other half of uh, Keith DeCandido, who's a with the first turn in Quartz Supernatural Tie-In novels. He's found at a lot of conventions. He's all around. Um, I can be found at conventions. Um, and um, that's really about it. And we're doing a book soon. So that's how that works. Very but good. Uh, editing, I'll be found more than under Whisperwood once we get the white, the, the Whisperwood, the W-H-Y-S-P-E-R-W-U-D-E, -E, once we get the website set up, which will happen soon. Very yeah. cool. Lynn? You can find me on pretty much any social media at Fangasm SPN. Um, I do reviews of uh, the Winchesters and Walker on fangasmthebook.com. Uh, I have a column, a regular column in Psychology Today under Dr. Lynn Zabernis. Um, and I write for Movie TV Tech Geeks, also doing reviews of those shows. So if any of them come back, 
look for my write-ups on them. And I have a new book coming out in October, but I'm not at liberty to say really what it is yet. But I have a new book coming out in October, so <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> And I'm Gelsey Martin and Morgan Bryce. Uh, if you spell them right, you can find me on all the social media and I'm on almost all the main social medias. I also run the Supernatural TFWNC group here on Facebook. And I'm a columnist for the Winchester Family Business blog. I've got a chapter in Lynn's uh, There'll Be Peace When You Are Done. And I've got a story coming out in that Four Question Marks of the Apocalypse uh, anthology with Whisperwood. Uh, but mostly you can find me here on continual. So thank you so much to our wonderful, wonderful panelists. And thanks to all of you for watching and listening. There will be more Supernatural coming up soon. So we'll see you online. <laughs>